Well, this is a big rally, of course. It's an important event in Martin's campaign. Um, I hope that the people will turn up. Already we have huge numbers queuing up, so there's a massive interest in Martin's campaign. Uh, a lot of people know that Martin is the best candidate in the field. He'd make an excellent president of uh, Ireland. He'd be a president for all 32 counties. And uh, I think that he will get a good um, uh, reception uh, from the people here today. People want leadership and people want somebody of the calibre of Martin McGuinness uh, to lead this country out of the mess that we're in and uh, no better candidate and no better man than Martin McGuinness. Well, I have to say that uh, for various personal reasons I didn't intend uh, playing a part in, in, in this campaign at all, but I was so dismayed and appalled by the hysterical reaction to Martin McGuinness entering the race that I realized I had to get off the fence and challenge some of this idiocy. And, uh, and, that, and that's what I'm at. Uh, I really think that uh, the kind of hysterical uh, response in cer certain media and political circles is, uh, is not assisting democracy at all. I believe the job of the media, the job of journalists, is to provide the information for the people so that they can make up their own minds. But it seems to me like uh, our media wants to uh, determine the result of this election. And I would argue that that has more to do with political propaganda than true journalism. It gives me enormous pleasure to welcome on stage one of Ireland's greatest actors, but someone who knows where his roots are and is very happy to come home. It's Colin Meaney. entrance I think uh, was a very special moment for all of us and, and Bobby's speech uh, I don't think there's anything left to say really um, it's it's uh, it's it's a great pleasure for me to be here to be home in Dublin uh, the home the home of Sam McGuire sorry had to get that in um, and to be in this very special building this building with such a history uh, in so many ways, uh, it tells the story of this city and indeed our country, where our, our first doll met. Uh, and it's, it's such a great joy to be here, to look forward, to look to the future, and to look to celebrating our next president, Martin McGuinness. <laughs> I think Bobby has put it very well, uh, the, the shameful media coverage has done nothing to, de to tear the plain, the plain people of Ireland, as Miles would say, Miles and Gopaline, from realising 
that it is, it is a vindictive and backward and narrow-minded campaign, and it won't work. It's going to backfire. And I, th I, I think the feeling in this room tonight and, the, and the, the, uh, the, 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 the number of people here tonight is evidence of that. This will only energise this campaign, and it will, I think, safely see Martin into the Auras. At, on the 27th. I, um, I normally wouldn't be involved in, in uh, a campaign like this. Uh, like Bobby, I would probably sit on the fence and, and watch events from afar. I think, as he said, we have all been affected by what has gone on and the negativity of it, and, and perhaps prodded into action by it. Um, when I saw the slate of candidates for this presidential election, um, it was kind of rather dull. <laughs> and, then, and then Martin came along, and immediately um, it, it felt energized. And, and you look at the slate of candidates, and there is no possible choice other than Martin, given his great uh, service to the country, his history uh, for the last 20 years and beyond, and um, his great experience as, as a statesman. Um, we don't have many of them in Ireland these days, and Martin McGinn is certainly a statesman. I just can't tell you how honoured I am to be asked to do this and to, uh, to introduce to you now uh, the next president of all Ireland. And um, it's just, it's, 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 I'm, I'm kind of quite emotional about it, but uh, I hope you'll give, as you have already indeed, uh, but I hope you'll give another really warm welcome for a great man, a great candidate, Martin McGuinness. <laughs> What is this election about? Well, for me, it's about hope. It's about leadership. And it is about patriotism. Not just because I really do want to be president of every one of Ireland's 32 counties. Patriotism is about more than that. And I believe that the people who cause the economic crash and mire that the vast majority of ordinary people find themselves in now were some of the most unpatriotic people ever to set foot on Irish soil. <laughs> and what is patriotism? Well, for me, it has always been about your country, about your people, it is certainly, certainly not about yourself. And this election is an opportunity for the people of Ireland to send out a signal about the values that are important to them, to send a signal about the type of Ireland that we want to live in, and also to elect a president that stands for those values. It's an opportunity for national renewal, following what I believe to be a period of materialism, greed and corruption that all have witnessed and are now angry about, a period when many of the core values that held our society together were effectively forgotten, a period when we knew the cost of everything and the value of nothing, a period when we focused almost solely on the economy but not on society, and an economic elite in my view, put monopoly capital above our social capital. Communities here in Dublin and indeed elsewhere were dispersed. Young couples from this city were forced to move out of their communities, away from grandparents and extended families to places like Meath, Louth and Kildare due to the exorbitant house prices. There was no work stroke life balance 
for many parents of young children. Parents faced long commutes. Both parents were forced to work to pay huge mortgages. Many parts of the city continued to be denied services and investment even at the height of the boom. So never again should such prosperity be wasted in my view. Other candidates in this election may not want to admit it, but we are a divided society. We are a society of haves and have-nots, of those who have wealth and those who are on the breadline, of those who created the economic crisis and those who are being forced to pay the price for it. And the decision makers have still not got the message. That there may have been a change of government recently, but in just six weeks' time, that government is prepared to unleash on the Irish people a budget which will have a negative and far-reaching impact on ordinary working families and on the poor, devastating cuts to vital services and social supports are about to be visited upon this society, causing more inequality and social problems and further depressing the economy. There are powerful groups and individuals in Ireland whose faith has been placed in the IMF and the EU and whose loyalty appears to be only to the banks and to the bondholders. These people are not patriots. I know who I place my faith in. I place my faith in the Irish people, and I know where my loyalty lies. It lies to Ireland, and I know who I stand for. And I know who I stand with hard pressed working families, those struggling to pay, pay mortgages, those losing their jobs and facing emigration, those with disabilities, those lying in hospital trolleys, those small land owners in several parts of Ireland who are now being told they can't even cut their own turf on their own bogs, those fishermen whose livelihoods, <laughs> like our economic sovereignty, have been handed away by successive governments. I've set out my stall. I don't want to stand with the elite. I don't want to stand with the great and the good. I don't want to stand with those who award themselves huge salaries, huge pensions and huge bonuses. I want to stand with the people who are trying to help people kick the drugs habit in Ballyfermot and all around Dublin. I want to stand with the volunteer spirit of the Irish people as they, for nothing, work in youth clubs. I want to stand with the community and voluntary sector who are facing huge cuts in the time ahead. I want to stand with the man of Mayo who rushed across the street and shook my hand and said, Martin, thanks for bringing the New York Stock Exchange to Belfast. My son applied for a job and got a job in Belfast and by God are we not glad he's in Belfast and not in Australia or New Zealand. So that's where it's at. I'm hugely humbled to be in this position, but I'm hugely heartened by the reception I've received all over Ireland. By the time I've finished this campaign, I will have been in every one of Ireland's 32 counties. And hopefully at the end of it, I will be the president of every one of Ireland's 32 counties. Going to meet him after. Look, up until last night I was happy just voting for Martin and you know every vote counts but last night I was looking at the debate on RT and uh, Miriam O'Callaghan like she's a fine looking woman for popping out her kids like but the way she attacked Martin last night and I, uh, I'm strong in saying that word she literally verbally attacked him um, and just like a couple of people said here tonight like she was repeating herself over and over again just waiting for him to, to falter and he wasn't going to falter like but I, I felt last night something had to be done about that and it's a, it's a pleasure and an honour to be here and to be associated with something like this so um, I want a president that will represent 32 counties and I think this he's the man to do it really.